Welcome back to Zone for Geeks. My name is Casey, and today we're going to be setting up a new virtual server. My current lab setup has Raspberry Pis running web servers and home assistant, an old desktop running Plex, and a few laptops hosting other services. It's time that I consolidate all of these servers and services into a single machine. Specifically, I'm using a Dell T7610. I'll be adding three 16 terabyte mechanical hard drives and a 120 gig boot SSD. Now these 16 terabyte hard drives are external drives, so I'm going to crack open the cases and remove the drives. The reason I went with these drives is just because they were cheaper than buying external drives. Speaking of money, nothing in this video is sponsored as I paid for all of the equipment myself. The total money spent will be covered at the end of the video. Taking a look at the server itself, we can see on the front this machine comes with USB 2.0 ports and a DVD drive. The front panel comes off to reveal four hard drive bays plus an additional three and a half inch drive bay that can be used for an additional peripheral or extra hard drives. On the back here we have our standard USB, serial, and PS2 ports. There are also two one gig network ports. This Dell comes with a single 1300 watt power supply that can be easily replaced if needed. If we open up the side panel, we can take a look at the internal components. There are two 8-core Xeon E52670 processors, giving me 16 cores and 32 threads. This server also comes with 256 gigs of RAM. When selecting the virtualization server, I wanted to make sure that I had enough memory that could handle all of my current requirements, but also leave me room to expand. This machine does not come with an onboard video or graphics card, so I'll be using an old 480 GTX that I had lying around. If I didn't have a graphics card, I would have just gone onto eBay and bought the cheapest $10 or $15 card that I could find. If we take a look here at the bottom, my hard drives are connected to an LSI onboard RAID controller. Now this RAID controller only supports RAID 0, 1, and 10, so if you're looking for something else, you'll need to install a new RAID controller. Okay, so now that we have seen the hardware, it's time to get to the software. I've decided to use ESXi for my virtualization. There are a lot of options out there, but I chose VMware's ESX because it's what you will find in most organizations, and I like my lab to be a representation of the equipment that I see on my job. This allows me to play around or test certain features without messing up a production environment. Now, I'll be using the free version of ESX, but it won't be the most recent free version. This is because there's a current bug with version 8 that affects my server. For some reason, VMware software throws a CPU out of sync error and ESX won't load. VMware is aware of it, but it hasn't been resolved as of the time of this recording. Instead, I'll be using version 7. I'll leave a link to both versions in the description below. I should also point out that if you're only using one processor, or if you're using a different machine, you might not run into this problem. If you haven't done so already, you'll need to sign up for the free VMware account. Once you've done that, you want to click on the License and Download button here. Now I've already completed this step, but if you haven't, you'll need to complete the license form. Once you do that, you'll be taken to this page. Here we have our license key and button to download our ESX ISO file. Now that we've downloaded the ISO file, we need to create a bootable USB stick. In order to create our bootable USB drive, I'll be using a free piece of software called Rufus. There's a link to it in the description below. Once we open Rufus, you want to select your USB drive. Then click select to find your ESX ISO file. I'm going to select ESX version 7. Leave everything else as default and click start. You'll be warned that all of your data will be erased, so I'm going to click OK here. It might take a few minutes, but when it's done, you'll see the word ready and the green bar here. Now it's time to connect our boot device into our Dell server and turn on the machine. Alright, so now I'm in my RAID 
need a controller configuration. So I'm going to hit enter because I only have one adapter. And then we're going to go down to RAID properties. And then I'm going to create, now like I said before, I only have the option of 0, 1, and 5. So I am going to create a RAID 0. Now before you guys start telling me all about the terrible ways that RAID 0 is bad for virtualization and a production environment, you are correct. Um, however, I am going to be doing daily off-site backups as well as hourly snapshots of my VMs. Um, and this is a lab, so I would never do this in a production environment. I would always use some type of redundancy, either RAID 5, RAID 10, uh, even RAID 1, depending on the setup. Um, but in my case, I'm just going to use RAID 0. So I'm going to hit enter there. And now I need to select each disk. So let's uh, see how the best way to do that. Uh, just hit the plus sign here to change that. And then we should hit C to create volume. And then we want to save our changes and exit the menu. So depending on the size of your hard drives, this can take just a few seconds or several minutes. Uh, in my case, it was just a few seconds. So now if we look and go back, we should see our, uh, let's cancel that, go into RAID and RAID properties. And so now we should see that we have our RAID disk is set to yes, 14.55 uh, terabytes. And at the very top, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a mouse, so I can't point to it. Um, but next to size, it says 43.65 terabytes. Um, so we're good. So we're going to go ahead and hit uh, escape to get out of all of this. And we are going to uh, uh, leave the configuration, go back into our boot menu, and hit F12 to uh, boot from our thumb drive. All right, so now we are in our uh, boot options. Now you can set the boot uh, device through the BIOS. However, that is going to be a permanent change, which means you will need to go back in and change it again if you uh, if you wanted to go back to booting from a hard drive. Uh, by going through the boot menu, this is a one-time use deal. So my primary boot drive is going to be um, this hard drive up here, and then um, temporarily it's going to be my flash drive. So I'm just going to hit enter here. and ESX is loading. I should point out that um, this can take quite a while depending on the hardware that you're installing this on. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. All right, so now that we have VMware installed, uh, we're gonna hit enter to continue. And then we are going to hit F11 to accept and continue. All right, and so once it's done scanning our hard drives, uh, at the beginning I did tell you that it was a 120 gigabyte hard drive. Clearly it is much larger than that. It's a 500 gigabyte hard drive, um, but that is going to be our boot device. So that is what I'm going to install it on. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter to continue. And then I'm going to use install because I do have a previous version. Uh, I did test all of this before um, I did this video. So I'm going to install and overwrite everything else and then hit enter. I'm going to choose US because that is where I'm at. Um, the root password. So we're just going to come up with a password here. And then enter to continue. And then we're going to do enter because we're going to ignore this uh, message. Uh, basically, this is just saying that in the future, ESX may not support my system. And then last thing, I'm going to hit F11 to install.
All right, so now I'm going to hit enter to reboot. All right, so we have rebooted and we are launching ESX. Um, it does take a while, uh, depending on the system, it can take about five minutes for it to actually fully load and to um, initialize. So we'll go ahead and speed through that. Okay, so now we have our ESX server fully booted and loaded. You can see we got a DHCP IP address of 10.1.1.4. Uh, if you want to go in and manually set the IP address, which I will uh, be doing later, uh, but you can hit F2 and then you'll put in your username and password. And then come over here to configure management network and then IPv4 configurations. And then here you can set all of your information that you want. For my case, I'm just going to leave it for the time being. So I'm going to hit escape to go back out to the main menu. And now I'm going to navigate over to 10.1.1.4. Okay, so we've navigated over to our ESX UI. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. The username will be root and the password will be the password we created during installation. And we now have access to our ESX server through our web browser. So there's going to be two things that I want to do beforehand before we end this video. And the first is going to be to go ahead and set up our license. So under hosts, I'm going to click on manage. Uh, licensing, you see we have nothing but the evaluation with no license assigned. So I'm going to click on assign. I'm going to grab the license from uh, VMware and plug that in. Click check license and we are good to go. And we can uh, now have full access to our ESX. If you don't have a license, you do get 60 days for free um, as an evaluation. But since it's already free to get the license, there's no point in not doing that. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create the um, storage space from our uh, RAID controller. So we click on storage and we can see I only have one data store and that's going to be the 500 gig boot drive that we're currently using. Um, but I want to obviously use the um, the 40 something terabytes of available space that I have. So I'm going to click on devices and you can see here we have 43.66 terabytes. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click on new data store. We're going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this raid and then I'm going to select use the full volume and then hit next. We're going to hit finish. We'll be warned that we will be deleting all of our previous information. Hit yes. Depending on the size of your um, hard drives, this can take a few minutes. So uh, we'll just go back and refresh here and we'll, uh, we'll wait for this to complete. All right, so now if we come back over to our storage, we can already see right here we've got two where before we had one. Come over to our data stores. Let's uh, close out that. Come over to our data stores, and now we can see we have our RAID controller at 43.65 terabytes. I'm not going to actually create a VM, uh, but just to see that it is available to us, if we go ahead and hit create, uh, let's just give this a name. We'll say test. Uh, we'll leave, doesn't really matter. And then right here we have our RAID controller or our RAID array um, available to us for our resources. Okay, so as promised, I will break down the cost for everything that I have uh, put into this virtualization server. So first things first, the server itself, like I said, it is a Dell uh, Precision T7610. I purchased it from eBay. Uh, fully shipped taxes and everything. It cost me $312.24. Now, I went with the server that had the most... Um, capacity for what I wanted to do, which was two uh, processors and 256 gigs of memory. It did not come with any hard drive space and it did not come with a graphics card. Um, 
You can get them with only a single processor and less memory for cheaper. Uh, they run anywhere between $200 and $230. So depending on your needs. Now for the hard drives, I purchased them from Amazon. I do want to point out that I purchased this at Christmas time. So there might have been some holiday discounts. Um, but my price per hard drive was $209.99. I bought three of them. So fully shipped and uh, taxes, it cost me $674.07. This brings my total price down to $986.31. So for less than $1,000. Now, of course, you can save some money. So you can go with a cheaper server. Um, you also obviously do not have to buy three 16 terabyte hard drives. Um, there are two things that I did have for free that I did not include in this cost. One of them was the boot drive, the 500 gig SSD. Um, you can install ESX on your normal drives. So I could have installed it on my RAID if I wanted to. Um, so you don't actually have to have a, an additional boot drive and, um, the graphics card. So if you're using software that is headless installation, so you don't actually need to see what's on the screen during the installation, then you don't need a graphics card at all. Um, um, in my case, I just, I wanted to be able to, uh, first of all, I had to configure the RAID uh, controller, but also I just like to see what's going on. And for the purposes of this video, um, I did need to have some type of uh, graphics card installed, but there, there is a lot of software out there, virtualization software um, that can be installed headless. So you can just pop it onto a um, external drive or thumbstick or something, and that's all you need. Um, anyways, if you guys like this video, I am going to uh, continue on with ESX showing uh, how to do a lot of things, but I'm, this video is getting a little long, so I will make that another video. Um, but go ahead and leave me a comment if you have any questions. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and we'll catch you on the next one.